Hey guys, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. So, <clears throat> let's kind of jump into it today. Um, we had a couple of, of at least what I hope were clear objectives from this morning's market preview. And, uh, this is, it's the following. Number one, I wanted to make sure that, um, uh, my focus was on looking for long side opportunities in this market. Uh, there's no question that that has been the easiest trade um, to take. Uh, secondly, I wanted to make sure I'm not getting bearish in the hole, right, and getting and getting smoked uh, to the upside. And then the third thing was I wanted to be patient and and let uh, let my rules and my trades set me up. And that's more of a tip of the hat to the last couple of days where we've just kind of getting these constant drives up. I wanted to make sure that I'm not getting frustrated without that I'm not getting the opportunities that I would like to have. And as it turns out. Uh, instead of getting two or three trades a day, I'm really getting close to one trade right now. But they're actually pretty good trades. They're actually paying pretty nicely. So uh have been happy there. I traded ES a whole lot better than I traded NQ today. Um, I didn't call any NQ trades on the stock Twitch stream. But internally, my uh, scalps failed today. And I stopped trading them after I had two stops back to back there. Um, however, my ES trade, which is my highest odds trade, uh, came through like a champ. So a couple of things. First of all, we had an open drive lower out of the gate. Now, um, what is the key to an open drive lower? Well, first of all, usually an open drive lower is accompanied by a gap up or a gap down. When it's not accompanied by a gap up or gap down, it tends to have a lot less velocity to it, um, and it tends to be uh, a range extension as opposed to a trend day up or t- trend day down. Not always. Uh, it's a rule of thumb, right? So for, um, the, we had two things that are on the horizon for this week. First of all, on Thursday, we had the ECB meeting, which for some reason, I guess there's been a lack of anything else. Everyone's decided that's going to actually be important for the U.S. stock markets. I don't see how, but sure, knock it out. Um, we had Apple start their... Co- big conference, developers conference this week, and um, I really thought that was going to hold Apple to the upside. Um, As it turns out, Apple got sellers early on, and it pulled NQ down, and um, it actually dragged ES down with it. So in the morning, um, a couple of things. First of all, we said we didn't want to short or go long in this area, uh, meaning Friday's high, Globex high, because there simply would not be enough rotation in that area. Um, as it turns out, we never got a test of Globex high actually um, at all today. Uh, we just didn't make it. We made it within a tick, but we didn't get there. Um, so the market opened, and we opened drive lower. I don't chase into the hole, and um, chasing into the hole or shorting the open over the last couple of weeks has been a great way to get your butt kicked. So uh, we didn't do that either, and I don't ever actually simply take the trade, or very rarely do I take the trade right out of the gate. It has to be a very special circumstance. What I did say in the market preview is that I was willing to take a long first time into this zone, and I posted on Twitter that at 19.15 and three quarters, I would take a long. Everyone in the world had time to, to grab this trade. There was nothing... Um, uh, stopping you from getting good entry. Obviously, we cleared all the way down to 1913 and three quarters. And my stop is always two points behind the back of the zone. And everyone asks, well, that's a huge stop. You ended up taking a four point stop. Well, look, this is a perfect example of where if you used a two point stop, all that handed you was a two point loss and you never got around to getting the opportunity to get profitable. And I've covered this time and time again with many, many traders. Tight two point stops or less get tagged out in ES. That's just how the deal works, right? Um, So that was my best trade entry for the day. But I had a second trade entry that I didn't take. Actually, I pointed out that was really fantastic and actually made me money today or it saved me money at the very minimum. And I think this is important. Not taking taking a losing trade is as valuable to me as taking a winning trade. So if you look at this trade right here, this is half back. A client of mine, coaching client of mine named Marty, pointed out that we were at half back right here. And I told him prior to getting there, right, that that half back, that first of all, that half back is in every Fibonacci book and in every technical trading book on the face of the earth. It is a 50 50 trade at best. And it is fodder for these hedge funds who want to catch all these retail traders who are trading with a point and a half and two point stops to nail them. They take it at half back thinking they're going to get rejection. If they're impatient, they actually took it early, right? Um, they take the half back and then they get stop run, which is right here. They really got run really bad all the way to the back. 
It was a terrible setup. It was in the middle of a poorly auctioned area, right? What goes down easily, guys, can go back through easily. Never forget that that's a huge edge in trading if you can just avoid those areas that were poorly auctioned, okay? And then the, um, so for those people that took this trade right here, they got their butt kicked. It was easy to kick their butt. Um, you could see that the hedge funds were going to run the stops right there, and that's exactly what they did. Congratulations to them. That's exactly what they should have done. And um, taking this half back is not a layup trade. If you can read about it, if it's all over stock twits, generally speaking, uh, or Twitter, it generally speaking, from a day trading perspective with leverage, it is not a good idea. Now, you take that trade without leverage, and you can wait all day. Well, you never got it back, but... Who knows, maybe tomorrow or the next day you'll get back out. But I'm a day trader. I like to be able to get out of my trades in 15, 20 minutes max. I like to be able to get a scale, move stops to break even. I want to point out something else that's really important here. And I know I'm a bit all over the place. It's late. I'm tired. And I want to get a run in before I go to bed. Um, this right here. I moved my stop after I scaled my first for um, two things. I was unable to acquire two points because I took it from the top, very, very top. Had I even taken it a tick lower, I would have been able to get my eight ticks um, easily. So um, after 10 minutes of, of trying to let it get my exit here and being in the trade already for 20 minutes, I finally took um, six ticks instead of eight ticks. It's a rare exception that I do that. And then I, I took two-thirds of the profit there, and then I moved my, la my stop to break even. Well, if you took the trade in the zone anywhere from anything except the very tip top of the zone, meaning anywhere from here on down... You had a fantastic opportunity to make a really good trade moving your stop to break even. You had a potential for a six to eight point trade depending on where you took this trade. And so I just really want to encourage people to, um, I really want to encourage people that at the right place with the right stretch to leave their trailers. Okay. I, I don't have a better way of saying that. Leave your trailers. It will be very helpful to you. And, um, I think, I think that um, um, it's a great way to uh, to turn back around that inverted risk reward I have at the zones. Now, uh, I'm going to take a coaching moment here, and I was a little bit tired, but I want to take a coaching moment to explain something. When you start off trading this methodology, right? The first thing I want to do is build my account size. All you need is two points. Right, and one or two trades a day to build a huge trading account. Number one, but number two, if you can get to the point where, let's say, your trade you go from two contracts to ten contracts over time, right? And now you can even leave three contracts here at break even, right? You take your two points on seven, you leave three open, and you attain an extra four points, even extra two points. It really helps work around that risk reward ratio. So then you end up with a high win, high win uh, percentage. And you end up with a, with a more balanced risk reward ratio formula. And it really makes it very easy to accelerate an account and grow an account and stop going from being a boom bust trader to being a consistent trader. Did I only get one trade set up today? You bet I did only get one trade set up today in the NES at least, right? But it was a winning trade and it's, um, while I didn't have a great month last month, I did have a solid month. It was 20 points. It's a thousand dollars contract. Good money, right? You're trading 10 contracts, that's 10 grand. Okay, you're trading five, it's five grand. You're trading two, it's two grand, right? But either way, it's good money. No matter how you look at it, you're trading 100, it's 100 grand. Okay? Uh, the, the other point that I want to uh, make on this is by having my decisions predetermined before the market opened, and I said before the market opened, I was taking along here, right? What that sets up for me is that I do not have to worry uh, I do not have to think outthink the market. I accept the stop when I get in, and I can go more to paying attention relative to what my emotions are and how they may be coloring my performance, right? I'm, I become aware, as uh, Dr. Menneker uh, refer, refers to it, rule your emotions, recognize, understand, label, and express. And then the other part of that is is I don't have to figure out tick by tick. I've taken my trade. I've already done my homework. I know where I'm good, and... Um, leave the guessing to someone else, I guess is what I'm saying. So, uh, and that's what, and that's what really brings consistency to my performance. I've posted the spreadsheet earlier this evening on Stock Twits and Twitter. It's there for everyone to see. If anyone has any questions about how I do the accounting, I'm happy to answer questions about it. Um, 
and even through a difficult period like what we're going through where there's very little rotation, I'm still squeezing out profitable trades out of ES, still squeezing out profits actually out of NQ. So I can't wait till we get to a two-sided market again. There'll be a lot of money to be made, but in the meantime, I'll keep grinding it out and throwing more chips on the stack and, um, and, and continue to increase my trade size as I move forward uh, and continue to make more money. So anyways, my name is Simon. If you'd like to learn how to trade like a professional, if you'd like to learn how to consistently uh, make profits and stop being frustrated by these huge boom-bust cycles or for many just the bust cycles, right, um, contact me. You can reach me at tradeandperform at gmail.com. Uh, the room is open to anybody who'd like to join. It's $95 a month. For the market previews, I'll be getting more and more recordings out uh, there. I'm a, I'm a little slow in finding the editing software that I need to make that uh, presentable for the blog, but I'll get it handled. And my biggest concern, my dr- what drives me, what motivates me, is seeing guys go from being losing traders to consistently profitable traders. And it's really, it's a big, uh, it's a big pump for me to see that. And um, uh, I don't have a lot of clients. I have uh, 10 or 12 guys that I coach more than I ever thought I would. But seeing them get consistent, seeing them to get profitable is an uh, awesome feeling. And it's good for them. They're doing the work. I'm guiding them a little bit, but they're doing the work. But their accounts are growing, and that's freaking, it's really cool. That's all I can say. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, StockTwits, Twitter, Trade and Perform at g- gmail.com. I hope everyone has a wonderful night. I look forward to seeing you guys in the morning. Talk to you all later.